Did you guys see Long Shot? Yes, I did. No, I did not. This is exactly the same movie as Long Shot, except Emma Thompson is Charlize <laughs> Theron and Mindy Kaling is Seth Rogen. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the THO Movie Reviews podcast, the show where we bring you passionate, honest, and insightful film criticism. I'm your host, Bennett Campbell Ferguson, and today we're doing a review of Late Night, and we are in the car of our first panelist, Maxwell Myers. It's a back seat movie review. I'm well, so it's excited. It's a front seat for you guys. For, yeah, I mean, it is my car. I called it. I'm, I'm, I'm in the back seat. I mean, Mo didn't call Shotgun, but he just kind of assumed. It was kind of cool. Implicit. It was nice. Speaking of which, Mo shot it, riding Shotgun. Hello. <laughs> I am also here. I will say it is a little funny that the host of our show is in the back seat. <laughs> Well, I feel, it's, it's I, I feel like, you know, like like we're like a triangle. You got sure. I'm like the, the topmost point. That is you fair. That you got is elbow fair. room. <laughs> that is, yeah. Plus, this way I have a good view of like your... Is that a dragon or a bat hanging on your... Oh, I do uh, have your, I do have a bat hanging in my car. He's my car bat. <laughs> he stays up all year round, and he's an old rubber bat that dangles from my rear view mirror. And I and he is hanging on by the tiniest shred of elastic, <laughs> and it's not his first string of elastic. He was in my first car. He'll probably be in all my cars. He's my little car buddy. Does and he have like, a name? He does not. He's just a faithful car bat. I don't know why he doesn't have a name. He he's he's older than names itself. I think. You know, I, I like I, I liked Late Night. Uh, oh, that, you <laughs> just jumped right well, into well, that. Well, no, well, I'm gonna tie it back. In, oh, but, okay. You know, what would have made me like it even more. A, a, bat. a car bat. A car bat. <laughs> no one. I don't know what he else has one, and I think I put him up one Halloween, and he just never came down. He's actually, but nobody cares about Halloween decorations left up too long. I, All right. So, <laughs> what would you get? What did you guys think of the movie? Let's. Uh, yeah, let's, let's get off my car bat. Let's, 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 let's talk about late night. Late night. Late night. I loved it. Uh, Mo. Mm. I liked it too. It was very funny and very enjoyable and clever. Yeah. Well, you guys kept it short. Well, uh, I'm, I was. I'm, 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 I figured I'm you were. Not, oh, you're not. Are you not? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna do a whole shebang. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's I didn't so, know if we were so leading into it. I'm you so guys used can. To you guys have a chance. Uh, you can do. You can do your whole shebangs after I do. Okay. That. Um. Uh, so I I I liked it uh, quite a bit, and I think people often underestimate how uh, hard it is to make a movie like this. You know, uh, Richard Marquand, who directed Return of the Jedi. Uh, he once said that you know it's 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 damned hard to make a movie that's really simple, <laughs> and I think that's true. I mean, this is a really clean, clear, simple movie. You know, it uh, really effectively pushes the crowd pleasing buttons. You know, it's it's funny, it's emotional, and so you know I I, I think you can't un- underestimate you know the amount of seriousness and craftsmanship that goes into that. On the other hand, it, it's good enough that I wish it were better. I mean, it does, uh, I I don't think there's anything in it that surprises me at all. I'm not saying, like, I could have written this movie. I I could not have because I'm not a screenwriter. But uh, did did you guys see Long Shot? Yes, I did. No, I did not. This is exactly the same movie as Long Shot, except Emma Thompson is Charlize (laughs) Theron and Mindy Kaling is Seth Rogen. And, And Long Shot is the same movie as a lot of other movies. So I mean, there. I, I I wish that it pushed the envelope, but at the same time, you know, I I don't want to uh, undervalue, which is a really entertaining uh, comedy. Can I? And you can't. Uh, can I ask you best both? To sneeze at. Without a without. I mean, I don't know if this counts as a spoiler, but Longshot does package itself as a romantic comedy, correct? Yes. Like well, this is this is this is. You, you look at it, note for note. This is exactly the same format. So oh, no, I know, and I don't doubt that. It has but, even similar emotional stakes. But exactly. I, but what I will say is, I, I kind of going into this movie, I was. I was expecting. I actually told somebody, they're like, oh, you're going to see Late Night. I was like, yeah, but I think I have the plot broken down. And I broke it into two very basic plots. Yeah. Just, and I thought I knew it because uh, mid Kaylee. And I'm not going to lie, it was plot B. I was a little more right about plot B. But there is more to this than it actually, I think, lends, than any of the trailers lend to. And even my boyfriend was, saw the first trailer and he's like, he forgot about it. <laughs> he watched the second trailer and goes, Oh yeah, I do remember this movie. That second trailer looks better, but I still don't want to see it. <laughs> and I was like, "Fair respect, but you know what? I should have seen coming, and I don't know why." Is uh, Mindy Kaling is a writer. She is a uh, 
Oh, yeah. And that was one of my selling points. Mo and I, I think, agreed to see this just because we saw the trailer, and I was like, I'd see that for free. And he was like, do you want to see it for free? And I was like... I just invited you because I know you love Mindy Kaling. It's true. And uh, I've been a fan of Mindy, uh, and I didn't really watch The Office, but I watched the uh, her show, The Mindy Project. Yes. And, again... That thing was also another one that kind of presented itself as one thing, and I thought I, every time I thought I kind of had it understood, she would twist it up a little bit, and that has always been her thing. Is even this is a very familiar plot, but it has her stamp on it, and it takes some turns and goes places I didn't really expect, and I really appreciate that. Uh, I mean, this really doesn't have much of a romance threadline running through it, or at least not in the conventional standard that we're used to. And I really respected a lot of that. And that's when I, I was like, okay, cool. You did give me kind of what I expected, but not how I expected it. And I'm okay with that. We were kind of talking about, like, well, product yeah. and packaging. Well, there are two, two, two points I'd like to make about that. And I, I, think, uh, I think a lot of what you said is spot on. I, I mean, certainly the, the central relationship between Emma Thompson and Mindy Kaling, I mean, that, that part is, you know, I, I think almost, like, knowingly, like, based on romantic comedies, you know, and I think... Uh, I don't think that's, you know, that's an inherently good or bad thing. It's oh, just yeah. it's just a reality, and it's a choice the film made. I think, you know, but going beyond that, you know, what you were saying about how, you know, there's, you know, more going on, uh, shall we say, under the hood, something yeah. the car, you know? But, but, I mean, I mean, you know, yes, the movie does hit a lot of familiar beats, and in some cases that may be problematic. On the other hand, when was the last time you... You saw, you know, a comedy, the, a crowd-pleasing comedy like this one that was dealing with discrimination in the workplace, that was dealing with, you know, all these, you know, ageism, questions of, yes, you know, sex. ageism, <laughs> sexism, uh, racism. I mean, hmm? it's, uh, and, you know, we can talk about, you know, how the, the movie handles that and if it goes deep enough, but, you know, it, let's not, you know, you know, undersell the fact that, you know, it's kind of extraordinary to see a movie like this yeah I mean this this yes this was a Sundance movie yes it was bought by Amazon so it's sort of an independent film on the other hand you know I mean for all intents and purposes it has the vibe of like a mainstream you know studio comedy like you might have seen in the 90s definitely yeah and and to the fact that it's you know you know dealing with these issues I mean that's uh that's kind of revolutionary you know in this particular Yes. Arena, at least. It's a movie. The, what I, my my big takeaway from it is that it's a movie about comedy. It's about how to be, how to establish your own voice and how to dis, decide, you know, what you're going to talk about, what you're going to say, what uh, what kind of jokes you're going to tackle, and it, it feels like it's. Mm, it feels like Mindy Kaling kind of pitching herself. I guess, which is a weird way, which is, I think, kind of a weird way to describe it, but it's her saying that, yes, there are these facts about her, that she is a woman, that she is, uh, uh, does not look like a lot of people on TV, uh, that she is a dark-skinned Indian woman, as she says in the movie, um, but that, that's her acid, that's not just, that's not, that is a hindrance for her in terms of racism and sexism, but it's also an acid because it gives her a unique voice, it gives her something to say that no one else can, and that becomes, like, the big thing in the show for, for Emma Thompson's character, is that she can say things that no other late night host can say, and that becomes her asset. Yeah. I like that, I think that's, I think that's really brilliant, I think that, that may be in a way the most interesting part of the movie because I mean I mean this applies I think certainly you know in all of our lives you know face that question when you speak whose voice do you use you know like the voice that's you the voice that you think people want to hear you know filmmakers face that question you know do you make the movie only you can make or do you you make what you think people want I think uh, I, I think it's very telling in this movie that when Catherine Newberry does start being honest, that, interestingly enough, is when she becomes popular again. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, that's no coincidence. I think we were, right before we were coming up, we were talking about uh, South Park and the points they make, but uh, how they, and how I appreciate the points they make a lot of the time, the way they do it, but I do not appreciate 
the package it's delivered in. <laughs> and it's like, ah, I agree with that point, but I really don't want to sit through the comedy to get there. And I really appreciate... One thing I really noticed about this was the movie was really packaged as what we in the biz, the movie <laughs> rental biz, call a mom movie. Uh, oh, yeah, The definitely. Best Exotic Gold Her- uh, Marigold Hotel is a mom movie. Under the Tuscan Sun is a mom movie. Steel Magnolias is just mom's movie it's all a mom movie and you're just like it feels like it's really trying to hit like a an easy safe movie for moms that they can see but what I really liked about this is it really kind of felt like that going in again that was kind of my assumption I like mom movies uh, on yeah. occasion They're, they can be a good I do too again my, I've been real stressed lately and at, at a certain point I was like you know what this feels really nice to just shut my brain off and just enjoy the comedy but what I really liked in it is they do quickly bring up a lot of uh, points about sexism in the workplace uh, race and like how people view but a lot of again newer I think ideas that moms don't really understand and so I, I was appreciating that it's like, you know, this is real. Sexism in the workplace is, comes in these different forms. And also, you know, being true to yourself and that, you know, all these other different things. But it's directed towards moms in a, in a package that I think they're like, ah, I get it now. <laughs> like, I think Catherine Newbury throws out well, a they're fact. Not, they're not a monolith. You know? No. <laughs> moms of America. Moms of America. Well, they, I just, sometimes moms are like, I know they always just say, they're like, I will respect it, but I don't get it. And sometimes okay. when you explain it to a way they understand, they're like, ah, I get it. And sometimes you just need Emma Thompson to break down <laughs> how in the 50s, you know, men would say, oh, the reason I need a raise is because I have a family, which is why... You know, they got the raises over women in the workplace, which has created a systemic issue. But I was like, you know, and I don't think it's something they think about. But when Emma Thompson says it right at the beginning of their movie, they're like, oh, I did. Oh, OK. I get it now. <laughs> they're like, ah, systemic sexism. I, OK. All right. <laughs> like, and that's just real quick. So I think in a weird way, that's kind of cool. And I think Mindy Kaling does. I mean, her voice is all through this. Uh, oh, and, yeah. And I think it's I think it's great. She's always writing about something like let's just talk about something familiar, but you know, with a twist or you know, sh- sprinkle the truth in these you know funny scenarios to help deliver this message to people. What about you know the the show itself? I mean, for people who haven't seen the movie, you know the the show that Emma Thompson's character hosts is it's called Tonight with Catherine Newberry. I guess I don't know what to call. It. I guess a, yeah. a late it's a late night, night talk show. It's a late night talk show. Know? Uh, I mean, I, I I thought the the joke where uh, that's that Mindy Kaling pitches in the movie where she says you know that's about you know uh, three Republican senators uh, proposing a bill to ban abortion. Emma Thompson does a joke about that. Did 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 any of you like? Because I felt this wish there was more of that. Because I I kind of that was that was really interesting, and I and I know that like. I mean, you know, whenever you're, like, you know, explicitly, you know, uh, talking about politics in movies, and, and, and what I mean explicitly, I mean, not just talking general issues, like, actually, you know, like, naming things, like, like naming yeah. a party, yeah. saying three Republican senators. I know, obviously, that's tricky, because, you know, if you're a filmmaker, you want to play to the biggest audience possible. You don't want to make a movie just for people of one ideology, but... I don't know. I mean, I think like I think w- what all of us have seen in you know comedy on television is that you know some of the most memorable stuff is the stuff that is the most specific. Did yeah. I, I, I don't know? Did you guys think about like would what would the movie be like if like you know Catherine you know Newberry was you know uh, you know making a joke about Mike Pence's rabbit, you know? I mean, yeah. a, I mean which, I mean, would not, not have been possible given when it was probably written, but... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, that's that, that's the kind of stuff that will absolutely date it. Um, and I think it's really hard to write those kind of jokes. I think... Well, I mean, I, let's, like, let's, let me... Yeah. Let, I'll say one more thing, though, but, I mean, let, let me, like, take, like, the notion of, like, like that kind of a example. I mean, should... If... You know, the notion that her show is rejuvenated... You know, that, you know, it becomes relevant again. I mean, you know, forget, like, referencing specific politicians, but should it have maybe been more political and provocative? Is there a missed I, opportunity? I don't, I don't think it could have been possible. I think I, right now, especially where, when she wrote it, it's hard to make the jokes at the time. And then as you get closer to the date... When did she date, write it? I mean... I don't really know, but, uh, I, really I mean, yeah, Mo's going to look it up. Yeah, uh, I, but then even when it was, Google. when it was filmed, it was probably filmed maybe at least a year before, uh, it was even 
at Sundance at minimum. Okay, uh, so, but, but but what I'm saying is, is like getting into specific jokes it gets really hard because I, of, I guess, uh, I, guess old, but, not, I guess maybe I well, feel like I'm I'm not like expressing well, no, my no 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 I think no, I know no, what no. you mean the jokes within the show but no, I'll, but let me say one more thing well though. let me let me finish because okay. this might answer it is right now I heard I mean when Trump got. Uh, elected, a lot of people were like, "Oh, you comedians must have a really good time. It's so easy to write jokes." He goes, "Honestly, it's really hard because so he does something. You go, that's ridiculous. You go to write a joke. By the time you turn around to present said joke, he's already doing something way more off base." I think, I think in any other instance, if this were a normal presidency, like a Man of the Year when Robin Williams, yeah, a few years ago, that plot was about a talk show host that unintentionally through a, an election malfunction <laughs> becomes president of the United States. And a lot of the jokes there are really specific and it, forget the whole like, oh, in a year these jokes will be dated. I think within the time of filming, just because right now, I mean, a week ago, President Trump was going off about one thing and then the next week he's calling out uh, four women in Congress which is very topical, which I think would fit in really well with this. In a week, it'll be a different story. I think I think they were just working at the disadvantage that, sadly, unfortunately, <laughs> the abortion joke is a constant place you can pull from and a joke that will work probably, sadly, six months from now. Kidding any kind of other specifics outside those parameters is probably really hard. They probably could have filmed it and they would have had to done reshoots before they even release okay. it, and okay. then be, still have been out of date, see, unfortunately. See, that's what I'm getting at. There are a lot of debates like abortion that are constants that the movie could have mentioned and chose not to. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the the film is a... Uh, you know, I mean, like, we're, we're supposed to buy the idea that the show has, you know, been rejuvenated. It becomes relevant again, that, that she can, you know, could be trending on Twitter. I mean, like... I mean, like, the whole, like, the white savior joke, it, it was kind of funny, but isn't stuff like that, like, a little, like, soft? Like, could it, was, wasn't there, like, an opportunity to do, get, like, a little edgier? I, and again, I'm not even, I'm not, I'm just saying, like, you know, in terms of, like... For jokes. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not, and I'm, and I'm not saying, like, what they had was so bad, it's just, I, I, I just keep thinking, like, man, push it a little more, you know... It could have gone from maybe being like a B plus to an A minus or an A. Eh, I I think the show is the the actual show uh, Late Night with Catherine or Late with Catherine Newberry, whatever it's called. Late Night with Catherine Newberry. No, Tonight with Catherine. Newberry. Tonight, Tonight with Catherine. Newberry. Newberry. Late Night with Seth Meyers is a real thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Maybe I'm mixing. Uh, who it plays up. himself? Spoiler who, alert. Who is in the movie? Um, he's, he's very good as as Seth Meyers. He's believable. I yeah, actually do with Seth Myers. She actually, she was actually job. She was there like shadowing his writer room for a few weeks to help her write this. She's like, I actually, I've never been awesome. in a late awesome. night writer's room. Only like the office and her own writer's room. So she's like completely different thing. Right. So, but yeah. Mm. But yeah, like for as much as the show is like the centerpiece of the movie, like the real, the, the core of it is, is their relationship. And that's oh, for sure. like what yeah. they're, that's what they're focusing on. So kind of the, the actual jokes and material of the show are kind of incidental. But it is a um, workplace comedy. It, I would, uh, yeah, I think I, to piggyback on what Mo's saying is, I think they put their edges everywhere else. And that the show is rejuvenated by the way she's rejuvenated. So I think maybe you could have done more evidence, but I think there is that fear of, quickly by the time of release being completely no longer in topic and but then it's like you said about the abortion debate like that you know <laughs> but i think never and i think to be relevant and i, I think mean, to find those other things is to add more time to the movie and i think they put all their eggs on the personalities and what's happening within that system especially do they do like to bring up at length you know sexism in the workplace and how you know her voice is fresh because of these things yes. and it's like i think it was just more of a you know believing without seeing situation like the teach us in the santa claus <laughs> <laughs> but more like so it's like i think we could have shown like more like we get more edgy with those jokes but i think you just kind of either you can write them and then you're just like that's actually not that edgy anymore or you know that's not that biting i think it's uh i think they take it and they put that where you can have more control over it we, we have to move on in a sec, but I, I think oh, yeah. the last thing I'll say on this point is, I mean, I, I think I think the movie could have been more than it is. I think I think it could have, you know, 
pushed a little harder, gone a little further, and then, you know, possibly been, you know, more engaging and even entertaining, frankly. On the other hand, I mean, you know, you said correctly, Max, I mean, this is a mom movie. And, you know, using that, that term, not necessarily in a specific way, but in a very, like, broad sense. It's I think, a general term. I think we all, we all kind of you know, have a sense of, of what that is, you know? I mean... Like, Moms I mean, agree, too. <laughs> I mean, the fact that, you know, there is, you know, a mom movie that's, you know, even as provocative as this one is, I mean, that's... Again, you know, that's kind of special. Yeah. I mean... Um, moving on. Gosh, and since... We had no preparation for this because we just saw the movie. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm that's how we ever styling it. I'm not sure how much preparation we ever have. I I, I prepare. I mean, yeah. usually Ben has questions. I there's, there's that. Yeah, there are questions. Okay. Um, uh, kind what, of what, you know what? We have, we have a little bit of homework. You know what? To hell with it. What 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 do you guys want? want to say Ooh, I want to say this is the, this is something that weirded me out a lot okay. at the end so the guy she has like the maybe spoiler alert we're gonna go into spoilers into this I mean where, are you listening to this because you were planning on seeing late night you're yeah, probably it's been listening for like a month we're and, recording this on yeah. July 17th it's on, true on, you're probably listening to this because you're like oh what do they have to say about late night because I have no intention of watching it <laughs> and that's fine we're here to do the work for you yeah but, uh, uh, so the guy who she has the maybe romance with, and then he turns out to be a douche, and they don't get together. Hugh Dancy. Hugh Dancy. He was, that blows my mind, because I know Hugh Dancy as Will Graham from Hannibal. Oh, so gosh. he's just like, the, oh, yeah. he's, like, because he was, he was three seasons, like, the super messed up, uh, uh, FBI serial killer profiler, <laughs> who was, like, he, cur- always on the edge of a knife, just, like, empathizing too much with serial killers and now he's just in a comedy and see, it's like, see I always think Ellen Enchanted <laughs> was he in that? yeah he'll, he'll always be the, the prince yes or he was he oh wasn't a, I just look at him and go he looks familiar but I never know why I'm like Hugh Dancy I'm like I know I know that name but I don't know from where oh well I'm sure it'll come to me eventually which by the way Mo when we saw Do the Right Thing mm-hmm. that guy was in Sister Act. Okay. Yeah, I'm, and I was like, wow, of all the places for me to remember. I've never seen Sister Act. Oh. Apparently Sister Bill Act Nunn was either. in it. Yes, he was. Bill Nunn was in Sister Act? Yes, he's the, sh- he's the <laughs> cop that hides Whoopi Goldberg, guys. Come on, it's a classic. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting off topic. <laughs> and you guys you know were what saying, Bill Nunn was in? I he was in the Spider-Man yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was Robbie, Robbie he Robertson. Was, he was the other guy at the at the newspaper. That's right. Uh, yeah. Classic other guy. <laughs> Anyways, I interrupted your point. Uh, that is my point. That oh. weirded me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, it is kind of funny that she, like, there's, you have, she, the guy she seems to maybe end up at the end mm-hmm. is, like, also terrible. But they <laughs> kind of decide he's nice at the end. Like, well, he's yeah. kind of a dick, but he makes some good points occasionally. He, yeah, that's like He's a boy. dick, but, like, like what is it? I think Emma Thompson is back. like, okay, so he's privileged and kind of a know-it-all. Like, if he was great every other way, does that really make him a bad person? And I was like, you know, the, that's a fair point. I mean, but if you can't stand to be in the same room with him, it's not like you're going to go on a date with him. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but it's, it's that same, it's... I think they're trying to to But he's definitely problematic. <laughs> he's problematic, but I think they're trying to say like he, he like just like her, you know, it's just cuz I was lucky enough to get this job doesn't mean I'm super enough to lose it. So Exactly. Like he got the job th- it's implied through nepotism, like his dad was a writer right, on the show, right. so now he gets to be a writer on the show, but it's like he ac- he actually deserves it. Like he can actually write decent jokes. He does put in the work. Yeah. Um Well, let, let me ask you I ask you guys this, and I, I, I don't actually, I think, have a coherent thought on this, but it right. strikes me as interesting, and I want to hear what you guys think of it. Uh, apologies to our viewers, I'm about to use some vulgar language. Um, uh oh. The scene uh, where where he says uh, to her, "Stop being a pussy," <laughs> and you know, like like, it, and that's it, it's not. And she says, "Oh, that was offensive," but it's actually a moment that kind of like builds her up. And gets her to toughen up. I mean, did any of you think about the fact that, like, you know, it, it, it's kind of, you know, horrifying to see a man say that to the heroine. But then on the other hand, like, she wrote that for herself. To say, for, for, for someone to say to her. I mean, like, like that's kind of, it's kind of, like, it's hard to know how to feel in that moment. Like, should I feel uncomfortable or should I, you know, 
like feel fine because she it's she what, made the joke. It's you know, what we're talking joke. about. It's it's I like the message, but I don't like the delivery of it. Uh, okay, but it's yeah, it's just that it's him telling her stop being a coward, stop sure. like wallowing in your own self pity, and just get shit done. But it also it like it feels. Like and and again, this isn't like necessarily a good or a bad thing. It, it you know there are a lot of words that could have been used, but it feels kind of kind of dangerous, you know, because that that word has you know it has connotations. It has, it has connotations. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting. I think that she really wanted that moment to be be charged because clearly, clearly that was a, that was a decision that was made very thoughtfully. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean. I I don't know how I don't know if I don't think you've seen all of the Mindy Project. Did you ever watch the Mindy Project? Uh, yeah, I watched it all the way through. Yeah, I mean, she kind of consistently, as a writer, she is. And I mean, in the show, what I always really liked about Mindy Kaling is she kind of reminds me of myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to say that I means she speaks to everyone, but in that show in particular, she plays this character. That, you know, is all about sexual equality and, you know, believing women and, you know, not letting, you know, the patriarchy take things down. But she also really loves gossip magazines. <laughs> and, and I was like, and I think she recognizes... She's super into rom-coms. And, and she's very about how she looks. But at the same time, she also believes she's, like, the most gorgeous woman that's ever existed. Like, when people are just like, what do you mean Beyonce doesn't look like me? We're, like, the same person. <laughs> and that's not a shot at herself, because no one looks like Beyonce, but she seems to have this idea that she looks like Beyonce. <laughs> and, you know, like, and that's just kind of who she is as a writer. And I think that's how I kind of took that line. Is I, I also always, weird that you pointed that out, because I did, I was like, oh, wait. But she wrote it. She yeah. knows. She knows better. And I was like, okay. So she went with it. And I think that just speaks to her style, which is always like, you know, sometimes you don't know what the right words are to say to articulate it because the only ones you have are just the wrong thoughts. And sometimes you need the harsh. And it's like maybe you just need a little harsh language. You're like, I don't know how to get through to you, but I'm gonna use a word. And he's like, you know, I know I shouldn't, but I'm gonna say it. Do it. Like, don't be it. And I can think in her weird way. I think it's a. I'm acknowledging this isn't the right thing, but sometimes you just got to say it, and I know what you mean, and this is what you mean. And I think she says what she means, or means what she says. I don't know if that's the right term. But, I like, and maybe it's just because I have on several times, I'm always like, oh, my gosh, you go, you whiplash back and forth sometimes so quickly. <laughs> and I was like, you know, sometimes it's just like me. Like, it's it's like I'm a baker. I can make biscuits, but you know what? I love Pillsbury can biscuits. They're garbage and full of high ratio <laughs> shortening, and I could eat an entire can of eight unto myself. And I'm not allowed to eat gluten or dairy. It's the worst thing I can have. But you know what? I know better. But they're delicious. Sometimes you just sometimes you eat the biscuit, <laughs> and I think that's her giving us the biscuit. <laughs> I like pretzel dough, by the way. Exactly. Like out of a can. Oh, I don't. I don't that's, know that's why really raw dough tastes good. It shouldn't, but it does sometimes. <laughs> have you guys been to the Cookie Dough Cafe? No, I can't no, have any of it. I, they I have vegan go, stuff. What? Nice. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> different story. Off topic. But, okay, well, well, uh, I want to. I want to go off topic, but to a topic that's related to a topic you brought up. Try saying that five times fast. Um, like you, I, I, I think that's interesting what you were saying about you know her you know, in the Mindy Project, being a feminist, but also being into romantic comedies. And, you know, I know this is not super related, but I, I have to bring it up anyway. I mean, I know we kind of have that is as men, you know, like, I mean, like, aren't, like, you know, for instance, like, you know, we're all big superhero movie fans. Don't mm-hmm. those movies kind of, like, you know, hold up sort of a an unrealistic body image Oh yeah. oh yeah, those, those are absolutely but, juvenile f- empowerment fantasies. And, and yet, and yet, we can we can relate to the, those characters on a metaphorical or, or emotional level. Yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, it's I mean, it's kind of interesting that like to each gender their own you know their own fantasy things. that has its you know yeah. problematic or toxic things, and yet like there's something at the core of it that you know you just we can like, respond to. That, yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to. I, I wasn't saying that to like try and trash romantic comedies. No, just, no, no, no. Sure. It's the it's the part of what I enjoyed about the Mindy Project is that she's enjoys feminine things unironically without reservation. Oh, yeah. and wholeheartedly, and the show goes with her on that. Yeah, nice. and I and she's also constantly like, yeah, okay, I like. She goes, but she always loves to bring up. She goes, I'm a human, okay? Humans love these things. It's just <laughs> like, yeah, sometimes you do. I didn't want to 
bring up when you were asking our random thoughts or yeah. our opinions. I will say while I was watching this, I was like, I think I think Mindy Kaling is gonna win an Academy Award one day. Oh yeah, I really do because I was just watching this movie and I was like. She just sparkles. Like, I feel like her voice is pouring right out of Emma Thompson. I feel her voice is pouring out of her character. She also loves to bring up these relevant ideas and thoughts. Like I said, she does bring up feminist theory while also admitting that she wants to wear a pretty dress. Like, within the Mindy Project, constant time and again. And also, totally, like... And those the two ideas are not mutually exclusive. Exactly. And sure. so, and but, you know, and I'll admit, this movie totally made me cry, but I was like, you know what? I think, I'm like, it might just be that, you know, a writing award one day. I mean, it might, I don't think she'll win for acting, but she definitely knows her voice. She knows how to package something and she presents it well. Because I'll tell you this, I watched every season of The Mindy Project, loved it. I loved this movie and her personality falls so completely flat in Ocean's 8 because... <laughs> They give her nothing to do, and I'm like, see, this is what happens when you have somebody who's like, I'm very passionate. Like, I was like, you don't know what to do with Mindy Kaling. She knows what to do. She knows what to do, and I think I think she's going to get there one day. I really think she's going to write. It might even be something like Late Night, where she wins an award. It could be like, uh, yeah. I mean, Emma Thompson won her award for Sense and Sensibility. That's right. Yeah, right. For writing yeah. and not acting, and she was in it. It's a great movie. It that's what pe- I haven't seen it, but you know <sighs> I know I have a hard time I also with Austin. I haven't, seen, it. I haven't, I haven't seen the Mindy Project. So. See, there you go. But I really do think I was like you know, late night is what it is. But once again, she subverts my my expectations. I was like, oh, this is gonna be a mom movie, and I was like, oh, there is some meat and potatoes in this mom movie. <laughs> Maybe some vegetables too. Good job, Mindy. I was like, and all of a sudden you tricked me into eating it. <laughs> I want to talk about the ending. I mean, I think, you know, the the kind of the lawn shot at the end, you know, showing, you know, in an office, a writing space, you know, filled with a much more diverse group of people than we see at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, what what's you guys' take on on that? Because, I mean, I can I can hear, you know, voices of some people would say, like, you know, like, could a person like Catherine Newberry, you know, really change that much? You know, on the, on the other hand, I can hear the the you know the voices of people you know who would say you know well like it's it's showing us something to aspire to. Yeah, it's showing us where things should be. I mean, do you guys have like like a take on you know, where the movie ends up? I'm down for that. I it's part of the goal, part of what makes fiction amazing is you can present the world as you like it to be, and if it's if that includes like a, a writer's room for a mainstream network television show that's full of people of different uh, genders and ethnicities, then yeah, go for it. Uh, that's actually uh, kind of how I took it too. Uh, I, I mean, I, I was a little sad that we like, oh, we jumped a year, and I was like, what happened in those years? And you kind of get that, like this brief glimpse, but I did feel that I was like. Oh my gosh, I think like half of the writing staff, like I didn't do a count, but it like at a glance, it looked like half of the staff on board was not just people of color, but just like women. And it was like, oh, so many women of color and so many just different I didn't shades see you dancing, by the way, so. <laughs> I, I was actually kind of wondering if he still had a job, but I like, but I mean, I didn't look that closely because I got thrown by this how many, how many women were there. And I was like, I mean, oh, considering no. what happens, it seems like, like yeah, he's it, fired. It the, yeah. Maybe yeah. don't make things awkward at the very least. <laughs> but I think, but I, but I did get thrown because I was like, oh, I mean, oh, that's a dream. And I was like, but then I was like, you know what? That should be the dream. It's really hard to dream a year from then, like, what the political landscape would look like or, you know, where we go. But wouldn't it be wonderful to just think that Emma Thompson did, like, you know, she's like, okay, fine. Whatever you're saying and doing, I almost called her Mindy, Molly, uh, you know, (laughs) keep doing that. And, you know, took her to heart. Like, you know, we need diversity. It can't just be white guys and me. And we're going to have interesting new different voices. Like, that's, that's, that's... Part of the reason, part of the reason why I like this movie is that like it's, they say like they say full on she is a diversity hire on the writing staff, but that doesn't mean she doesn't have something to say. Sure. Which uh, uh, is it Bill O'Hare? 
Dennis O'Hare says, Dennis O'Hare. kind of basically surmises pretty quickly, which was when she's getting hired and she admits that she worked at a chemical plant <laughs> before this, and that's all she's ever done. And she does, and he hires her, and she goes, oh my God, I thought this was going really badly. And he goes, <laughs> I mean, it was, until it wasn't. <laughs> and that's kind of her. It's like, you know, it does go bad, but if you persevere, it can get better. Okay, and, another thing that really stuck out to me was the whole story about how through the essay contest and like how you know she's basically able to like network into the meeting i i loved that because i feel like like that is is so of this moment i mean like like we all don't we all kind of get jobs like that i, I mean through that like you know it's like oh well i knew this person and then it I mean, does that's, sometimes that's it's like of, that weird borderline you think it's nepotism but it's just like actually no i just happen to know somebody i mean my last job was one of my coworkers was like, oh, one of my friends actually just quit at a gluten-free bakery the day I was going to go drop off my application. And when I did, they apparently had already filled that position but had posted a new one like two hours before that <laughs> for a position that I had walked in and handed a resume to. And they were like, we don't even know who you are and how you found that out. They're like, did you find us on the Internet? And I was like, no, somebody told me somebody quit. They're like, we filled that position weeks ago. I was like, oh. Well, I guess good luck to me then. <laughs> and see, sometimes it does happen that way. See, I just read that as TV is weird because it's like the parent company of a network also makes like owns a chemical plant. I, sure, I, sure. And I, I really I love mean, that. I think it felt absurd, but I was like, you know what? That was, that, That's exactly how I would want. Like, like this is the only way you could somehow magically explain where she comes from to how she gets there without going like, oh, I just never got a job as a writer. Like. It was awesome. I love that, like, weird TV's weird moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, like that. They, they, this was like a whole arc on 30 Rock, was where they get bought out by uh, uh, Cable Town? Yeah, Cable Town, <laughs> kind of like NBC. Yeah. Or Comcast. Yeah, like, Comcast bought out NBC. Yeah. It and, was, like, they, and, like, the Shinehard wig, wig, wig company, company was also a big part of it. <laughs> yeah, that sh- yeah, some weird wig company actually owns it. I like that there's so many weird companies that own NBC. You think NBC would be somewhere near the top. Like, no, we're just a puny TV network. Like, yeah. what do you think, Jerry? You're, he's like, oh, Jerry Seinfeld threatens to... Uh, buy a NBC and turn into the largest Lane Bryant in Midtown and, and Jack goes, ha, like you just happen to have four million dollars lying up I'll get on it right now <laughs> I think one of the single best thing best illustrations of this kind of thing was that did you guys ever see In Good Company no Race and Dennis Quaid I did it was so long ago love that movie with it? young Scarlett Johansson yes yeah and then the, the whole thing is like their company is like a uh, bought by some conglomerate called Globecom <laughs> and then like you know uh, Ma- Malcolm McDowell is like the head of Globecom and like uh, or, and eventually shows up to just like talk about synergy <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> just like synergy <laughs> what does it mean oh my god just, yeah that's that's our world yeah, oh definitely. my god I'm this is completely off topic one of my favorite songs off Weird Al's latest album off of uh, Mandatory Fun which came out like four, five years ago now I yeah. think yeah but one of them is called uh, uh, God Business Management or something. I think so. Something like that. I'm, it's on my iPod, but it's, like it's written like a Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young song. Yeah. And it's just like corporate jargon. Like that's <laughs> all the lyrics is just like we must operationalize our corporate profit. Oh, I do remember that. That was a weird oh, Operationalize. One. I like that. Like s- something like that. Uh, uh, what's what's the song called? Um, Mission statements, ah, that's and right. it's like someone described it as like the false promise of baby boomers who were part of this like huge countercultural movement, and then just wound up getting corporate gigs, and like the 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 cognitive dissonance of that, oh. and that just is like oh that cracked me up. That's great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you guys have any final thoughts on late night? We... Um, it's a. I mean, we're about to lose at the theater because we're getting Lion King this weekend, and that's going to be a nightmare. But Go see it. Sounds it's like fun. you guys are going to feel the love. If you, if, <laughs> oh God. Uh, Excuse fuck. me, I'll show myself out. Uh, the geez. fuck off, dude. I would, I mean, I would say, yeah, it's uh, Late Night is a decent movie. It's not your typical mom movie. So if you have any kind of curiosity or just an afternoon to yourself, I recommend it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I it's agree. worth a laugh. It's got good people. Emma yeah. Thompson is still great. I laughed, She's I cried, I had a good time. Goddamn treasure. Yeah, Emma I Thompson agree. does yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, I mean, I I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was, you know, interesting. I, I think, you know, e- even if it's if it's quite safe in some ways, it's provocative in others. And, and My 
Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. John Lithgow is in it, and he's nice. Like, oh. that's, that's, like, one of my favorite things now is when I see, like, people who get typecast as villains a bunch playing nice people. And it's like, aw. I love oh, John Lithgow. I just love him wherever he is, even when he is an asshole or scary. I'm like, I was I'm always like, ugh. Have you not, oh, so have you good. seen season four of Dexter? No. He I is heard. goddamn terrifying. <laughs> Here, it's great. Uh, uh, did you guys ever hear that, that album he did? Do you, no, it's, what? It's, it's no. freaking hilarious. What? Is, is it a comedy album? A music album? Yeah, like, it's like a, like a children's album. Like he sings goofy songs. It's oh, really good. God. That oh, would be, I don't know it's how amazing. I feel about that. It's mm. amazing. He oh, plays but, piano in the movie. He did. That's right. That's right. Um, the only final thing I would I'd say about the movie, I mean, I, I think, you know, I mean, to some of the comments I made earlier, I mean, I, I hope that, you know, you know, other writers, you know, the next Mindy Kalings will look at this movie and, uh, you know, say, hey, this is a step forward, you know, like I think I can, you know, take a step even further forward in a crowd pleasing comedy. You know, we we talked about this as a, a mom movie a lot and this <laughs> we could yeah. do a whole podcast on mom movies. Oh my gosh, but, uh, I would talk. which would be amazing. <laughs> I, I think uh I don't know how I, that I, would I, look like cuz my mom's favorite movie is Ghostbusters and that's not what you would call a mom movie. <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, you, it, it's I mean, not my, your mom's like, favorite movie. It's just your generalized like what do you think Karen who might complain to the manager <laughs> after she turns 45 and she just sits at home and has a glass of wine and watches? <laughs> that's what you would fill it in with. And you're like, "Ah, that's a mom movie." But Fair. my point is is don't I, I would say don't uh don't underestimate uh, moms and uh, and uh, yeah. Mother's Happy Mother's Day! <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, God. July. Once Only... again, it's July seventeenth. <laughs> Only this movie come out in May. God damn it! Damn it! Uh. Ah, that's what you do a podcast in May about. Anyways, <laughs> well, if you like this podcast, please click thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at THO Movie Reviews. And please check out all the great reviews and content. We have it at thomoviereviews.wordpress.com. Once again, I'm your host, Bennett Campbell Ferguson, here with Moshe on that, and Maxwell Myers, and beep, from beep. all of us at uh, <laughs> THO Movie Reviews. Happy belated Mother's Day, I guess. Yeah, I think that's sure. in that one. <laughs> Every day is Mother's Day. Yes. Oh, someone's trying to win points. <laughs> and, of course, happy movie watching. Oh, yeah. That's like the actual sign-off line. Is that's that? right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know we had it. Happy Mother's Day. In July.